So now what we need to start doing is we need to start converting this thing that we have to a uh, to points because of course if you if you if you know what a fluid simulation is a fluid simulation is well it's particles moving through a volume so we need we need particles right so let's do a uh, point from volume and that will create points from a volume now if you've watched my old version of pyro to flip uh, which I did years ago and of course in the meantime I learned quite a lot I used sparse volume well what we will be doing right now we won't be using a sparse volume i will be showing you later why not because this will generate a lot more points if we put it to dense grid but um what i noticed is when we actually need a super high resolution um, volume later for rendering uh, we will lose a lot of details if we use this so what we will be doing is we, we will be using this and later we'll, we will be removing the points that we don't need. But for now, we kind of want to want to use them. So we will have a lot more points, but it will have to do for now. So it, it's fine. So what we want to do is we want to go into our pyro simula simulation and disable simulation so it won't start cooking. Let's go over there. Let's copy parameter on our division size. Let's go to pyro import. And then based relative references in our point separation. So now these points, so now the, the separation will be similar to what we have in our pyro simulation. So now we will have one point for every voxel. And again, if we do sparse volume, we can see it looks like the thing, but we do want the entire thing. We, do, we want the entire volume. Right, so now we did with this out of the way, let's extract some attributes from our pyro simulation because we need to extract all of the things. We need to extract this density that we have, but we also need to extract other things. We need to extract the heat, the temperature, the velocity, all of that stuff. So let's uh, let's start doing that. Okay, so with this selected, let's do attribute from volume. So this will do is it will create basically what it says it will create an attribute from a volume so if we append this to the point and then append the second one to the volumes like that and no we don't want velocity what we want is maybe density so let's first extract our density now we've extracted our density values we want to extract them from density because that's our that's what our volume is called, right? If we middle mouse on this, or if we press the little I there, you can see this is all of our volumes. And again, like every uh, when you have a, a simulation like this, um, every every part of this sim is is a separate primitive. So if we look in this this thing and we go into geometry spreadsheet, and we go into primitives. Every so un unlike with points where you have like information for all like all of all of the points with a volume it will just be a primitive for every single uh, thing so we have density velocity temperature heat so every single volume and those inside of them have all of the information we can extract so inside of this there's the voxel information we cannot really see it like that well what we can do if we want to we can visualize these values as well so what we're doing here is we're going to extract so let's just finish this train of thought first before we start uh, diverging too much but let's put it to one because it's a flow density and let's go look into our geometry spreadsheet go in here and now you can see we have a whole bunch of density values so some are zero so those will be of course the ones over there and some will be high so let's say if we just want to try, put down an attribute wrangle and say that if our density, and if, if you're not familiar with just simple wrangles like this, I highly, and, and like if you're new to Houdini in general, I highly recommend you check out uh, maybe my Houdini 101 course, which just focuses on the basics, no simulations, but that will, um, how this is a 20 hour course and it will go over vops and, and attributes and all of this kind of stuff so if, if you're new to all of that i just generally recommend watching this course first 
because uh, I will be using some of these basic wrangles throughout this course. Um, we won't be doing any super complicated wrangling, but just keep in mind that you need to sort of have a basic understanding of it. Anyway, so if the density is below, let's get, give it a threshold, 0 0.001 or something like that. And then we can say remove point. We want to remove it from the first input. And we want to remove the point number. Right, so you can see if we do that, then all of these points here, all these extra points that don't have any density will be removed. So you can just put this, put this to the side for now, but just so you know what's going on. We could visualize these uh, these values as well. So if we press D in the viewport, or maybe we can just create a visualizer a different way. If we go to here, let's press density, and it should create a visualizer for every single one of these points. So let's go to visualize. So if you press D in the viewport, go to visualize. I get this thing now. So it does, it has a ramped attribute. We don't want that. What we do want is we want it to be, Let's have a look. Let's put it as a marker. All right. So if we put it as a marker, we can see the values for every single one of those points, which will also be in the geometry spreadsheet. There's another way we could also visualize this. So this is our Houdini native volume. You can see it's a little bit green. That means it's Houdini native volume. If we convert this to a VDB. So a VDB is a sparse volume. If you want to know more about VDBs, there's a whole bunch of information on it. But essentially, a normal volume like this um, will sort of store information in the entire volume. If we do it, if you create a VDB, then it will be sparse. So it, it will it will not store any information. Um, where there's no information. Anyway, what we just kind of want to do, and also you have this, info, this stuff here with the uh, precision. So similar to what we did before, you can see 3264. Um, well, just for this case, we could kind of want to visualize these voxels. So we can do is VDB. I think this is the one, visualize tree. So you can see now we get some voxels, you can see the red ones are one are the ones that are, where there's some information stored. So let's put active voxels. Um, and then I think what we need to do is points with values. And yeah, you can see we get it as a VDB float, and you can also visualize it like that if you want. So just an extra thing how you can visualize sort of this stuff. So anyway. Just going a little bit slower with this course than usual and just explaining some more detail because I got some questions from some people that saying that I should maybe try to explain some more in some more detail and reiterate some stuff. So that's what I'm doing from now. Anyway, what we have done here is uh, grabbed our density and then put it into an attribute called density. So we have that thing. And Maybe before we do all of the other channels, let's just see how we can, and let's turn off our visualizer. Let's see how we can rebuild what we have here, our density, uh, rebuild the volume and see how much of the detail we can actually keep. Because that's important, right? Uh, if you saw my very old tutorial, you don't really keep any of the detail. What we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try to keep as much detail as possible. So we get a nice looking, Bio simulation. So before we do any of the other channels, let's just focus on density first. <laughs> 